The Toyota Land Cruiser is an iconic off-roader that's been around for more than 60 years. During that time, a lot of its competition has morphed into crossovers, but the Land Cruiser remains a dependable off-road vehicle that's ready for adventure. We're here in the mountains outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, to see what makes it so special. But before we get into that, remember to use Edmunds next time you're ready to buy a car, truck, or SUV, and click subscribe for more videos like this one. In 1960, the FJ40 got the ball rolling in North America. This two-door Jeep-like vehicle with a removable hardtop introduced us all to Toyota's bulletproof reliability and off-road know-how. The FJ55 came in 1967. This is the FJ that was designed to be a four-door wagon from the outset, and its design was heavily influenced by the requirements of the North American and Australian markets. The FJ60 was rolled out in 1980 and was a further refined model with a better interior, more power, and more gears. The term sports utility was just getting popular, and this Land Cruiser was designed to have even broader appeal. The 1990s was the era of the FJ80, and by this time the alphanumeric codes were Greek, or I should say geek, to most people. I'm in an 80 series Land Cruiser. They have a, a, a several older cruisers to choose from, and I picked the 80 series because I used to own one of these and I put about 100,000 miles on it and I regret selling it. It was a great truck. And the thing about it is when it came out, it was kind of a notorious mall wagon. That was because it came out right when the SUV craze was at its peak and everybody was buying the biggest SUVs they could. So a lot of people bought these and just drove them around town. But the thing is, this is one of the best ones for off-road use because it's solid axle front and rear. It's got triple lockers available and coil spring suspension, not leaf spring suspension, so it's easy to mod, easy to lift. It's really capable, uh, even if people did think of it as a mall wagon. Now that I've driven this a little bit, I mean, I gotta have another one. The FJ100 was first sold here in 1998, and it broke a lot of new ground. It was the first Land Cruiser with a V8. All previous ones had a straight six. It was the first with independent front suspension instead of a solid front axle and the first with rack and pinion steering instead of a circulating ball. All of this made it better for street use, but it still had the off-road chops to outdo what was left of its full-size SUV competition. And that brings us to the 200 series, which has been with us for over a dozen years. This is a truck we know well, and Toyota is celebrating over 60 years of Land Cruiser success with this Heritage Edition. There's a lot of changes on this truck, but the one that I like the most is this badge here. It's the same one you'll see on the oldest FJs on the road or in any museum. It's really cool. Other changes include BBS forged alloy wheels, no running boards, and this roof rack. Other changes are merely cosmetic. The mirrors are blacked out, so are the backgrounds for the headlights, and there's a darker chrome on the grille and these fog light surrounds. But then there's changes inside too. Inside, you'll find special perforated black leather seats with contrast stitching that matches the wheels. The cooler box has been deleted from the center console, and you may wonder why they did that. It's because they got rid of the third row seat to make more room for gear such as a cooler or a plug-in refrigerator. One thing I really like about the Land Cruiser, and a lot of people do, is this tailgate setup. You can get stuff out without anything falling out, or you can open it for easier access or sit here and tie your boots. And with the third row deleted, it's just a ton of space. I'm a big fan of the 5.7 liter V8 that powers the Land Cruiser. It's got a lot of power, a lot of torque, the eight-speed automatic that comes with it just gives it all the right moves when it comes to shifting. And, you know, there's just no problem. It can tow 8,100 pounds, too. So this is no slouch at all. Um, it is, though, a little bit thirsty. 14 miles per gallon combined, 13 city, 17 highway. You're going to be pouring some gas into this thing. This particular generation of Land Cruiser has rack and pinion steering and independent front suspension. And they combine to make it a great daily driver. The Land Cruiser is really easy to steer and the driving position gives you a commanding view of the road, but it's not perfect. 
I wish the seat went down a little bit more and the steering wheel could telescope out towards me just a little bit. I feel like I am reaching for it and the steering wheel feels like it's in my lap a little bit. I'm not as impressed with the infotainment interface. It's got a great big touch screen, but the graphics are kind of dated and it doesn't support Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Those two systems got added to the Forerunner and Tacoma systems this year and they really transformed the experience, but here it feels a decade old. We're in an off-road park outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, and we're going up a little bit of a rocky hill right now. This is steep enough to put it in low range, which is easy to do, but uh, it's not really going to push this car to its limits. Not, uh, oh, I better not say car, uh, push this Land Cruiser to its limits. The thing that we might notice is that the, uh, the stock mud flaps do tend to rub on rocks. Um, but it's uh, no harm, no foul. This truck has several features that give it great off-road capability. I mean, it's suspension layout. It's got a five-link coil rear suspension, uh, independent up front. Uh, that part is debatable, but it works well. Um, but what's going on is it's a full-time four-wheel drive machine with a Torsen center differential that you can lock. On the pavement, it's unlocked and it distributes torque 40 to the front, 60% to the rear. In a, in a situation like this, you can push this button, you can lock it, or if you put it in low range, it automatically locks it. There are other things such as crawl control, which is a low speed cruise control that works uphill or down, forward or reverse. There's also a multi-train select that reconfigures the traction control for different types of uh, terrain. But the thing that I really like is something called kinematic dynamic suspension system, which is easier to say as KDSS. And that's a set of stabilizer bars that can sense when you're off-road and basically disappear. They disconnect using a hydraulic mechanism so you have maximum articulation. Uh, then when you get back on the pavement, they reconnect and you've got great uh, control of body roll, even on a winding road. The tires on this vehicle are all season, all terrain, uh, they're good. Um, I'm not having any problems here. I think, you know, if you were gonna off-road full time, you'd probably look for something with a little bit more traction. Um, but the size is good. Um, and these are really nice forged BBS wheels. I'd hate to, uh, to replace those because they're really special. But uh, yeah, you might want more traction if you did this all the time. But if you're gonna do it occasionally on roads like this, they're fine. One of the things the Land Cruiser has that a 4Runner doesn't, for, for example, is something they call turn assist. It's a button here, and when you want to make a really tight turn, what it does is it clamps onto the inside rear brake, and that helps the turning radius in a really tight situation. And it's really a nice little tool to have in your toolbox. And that's really what it is, you know, when you have an off-road vehicle. The more things you can deploy in different situations, the, the more enjoyable and trouble-free your experience is going to be. The Heritage Edition, which is what we're in now, has a few changes that are targeted at the person who might take it off-road more than the average person. The contours of the front and rear bumper covers are the same as a regular Land Cruiser, so you still have the same approach departure and breakover angle underneath, and those are all good numbers to begin with, and they're still the same here. What's different about this that helps the off-roader is they've eliminated the side steps. Now, if you're the kind of person who drives in the street, you know, in the city all the time, you may not like that move, but if you're an off-roader, you like that move. <laughs> the Land Cruiser's mission has changed a little bit over time. It started out as, you know, a rough and tumble, dedicated off-roader, and over time, it's become more and more family oriented, but at the same time, keeping really outstanding off-road performance for a vehicle that can take the family out on an adventure. You know, of late, a type of off-roading that goes by the name of overlanding has cropped up and the Land Cruiser fits into that mold really nicely because it's got the room to haul your gear. It's got off-road performance that'll get you most places. I mean, it's not a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, um, so it's not 
ultimate in terms of that. It's not single-minded. It's a good all-round vehicle that has a very solid off-road foundation and a good ability to carry equipment and people there and back again without breaking down. This is a premium vehicle and it's priced accordingly. But if you look at the prices of a lot of large SUVs, you know, like you get a loaded a Denali a GMC or, a, or, or an Escalade or even spend a lot of money on something like a Suburban or an Expedition and you'll be in the same price territory as one of these. It's a lot more expensive than say a 4Runner. But the Land Cruiser has always been aimed at a more premium audience. They're not trying to sell a hundred thousand of these. They're trying to sell a certain number that uh, appeals to a premium buyer who's looking for you know, the ultimate off-road nameplate. It's kind of a rare vehicle. They don't have an unlimited number to sell, and that's because Land Cruisers are made for all over the world. They're sold in many, many world markets. So we're one of many countries that's getting an allocation out of one plant, and that kind of plays into Land Cruiser's mystique. It's a rare, special vehicle that you don't see every day. What have we learned here today? Well, the Land Cruiser remains a comfortable daily driver, and it's a capable off-roader for those looking for a little adventure. As for the Heritage Special Edition, there's quite a few changes that give it a nod to the past, but also increase its functionality for those who would really take it off-road. I really like it. Do you? Let us know in the comments. And remember to use Edmunds next time you're in the market for a car, truck, or SUV. And for more videos like this, Click subscribe.